Hey, everybody, you're listening to the Total Basis Podcast. I'm your host, Felipe, and with me is my guest, Stephen Carey. Stephen, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you, sir? How are you? I've been better. No, I've been really good. I've been really good, you know. Especially this year with the fantasy baseball teams, it seems like every team I I have is winning. But of course, uh, the slumps when it's if when it's not going well, oh my god, it's the worst. I'm going through a slump on both of my categories league. But we're not talking about categories leagues. We're talking about the fantasy point head to head league that we're in, the Mardi Gras Madness League. I wish I had like a background that was Mardi Gras related, but I don't. I don't. So without further ado, let's get to it. The Mardi Gras Madness League. Let me share some background first and foremost how long have you been on in this league so far so much to my surprise i actually looked that up today um since 2016 so this is my seventh season and i don't know i I don't feel like it's been that long but it has (laughs) so since 2016 and i've uh i've recorded uh one championship in there and uh multiple playoff appearances just gonna put that out there yeah (laughs) yeah that's awesome uh, I see that you're you're wearing your broke pitches jersey. Can you tell us about that? What's that about? Yes, real quick, we're gonna get into that real quick. My shameless plug: we got broke pitches, Chicago uh, co-ed softball team. We play in uh, different uh, parks in Chicago. Uh, this uh, league we're in now is at Brands Park. A little bit more competitive than the ones we've been in. I'm um, so looking forward to the challenges. But uh, we do our social media, so I'm just gonna put that out there. We do Instagram. We do broke pitches. Uh, TikTok. We have a lot of fun with it. Um, a lot of funny clips, goofy clips afterwards, interviews. Uh, yes, we just try to get people to follow. And uh, the hope is that one day we can kind of start doing some like non-for-profit stuff, you know, charity stuff and things like that. So that's our ultimate goal. That's great, man. Um, I'm glad that, and I, you know, I'm glad that it's not, it's not too strenuous for you. You know, we're, we're all, we're all old men around here. We're all getting up there and uh, long on the tooth as the saying goes, but you haven't experienced any uh, injury, any scary injuries since playing. How long you been? No, knock, knock. No, I've been, been playing with them for about uh what this is my sec. This is my second season with them. They've been together for three, but I am, I'm not afraid to admit it. I am the old man of the team. Um, I think uh, there's a guy, a couple of guys that are close to me, but then most of them are, uh, younger what maybe between i would say between 30 and 34 so i got a little bit of time on them but you know i use that uh, to my advantage my 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 wisdom guides me on the field <laughs> and uh, out of curiosity what position you play and i'm gonna say uh it's a, so- it's a 16 inch softball you said or how, how it is how? and keep in mind i'm left-handed so okay i'm gonna say that you play i'm gonna say you play first base i do not i i play left field um that's my second guess and then uh, I pitch. So one of the two. Um, I would love to play the infield, but I have played the infield, but it is incredibly hard to <laughs> snag a ball on a shortstop, then turn your body completely around and try to throw a grown ass man running at full speed at a 45 foot base out. So or 60 foot base. I have, Yeah, 60 foot. Um, yeah. So no infield for me. And I would argue I'm a little too short for first base. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the hands, bro. It's all about the hands. Yeah. Which, uh, as you know, uh, all, all my uh, all the coaches, my athletic coaches, football, softball, and all the ladies have something in common. They all used to say that I have very soft hands. Oh, wow. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> know anything about that. So <laughs> next time I see you, I'll make sure to give you a pat down. There you go. All yeah, right. Well, with, <laughs> with that being said, let's go ahead and share the old screen. This is the Mardi Gras Madness. Uh, this is a league that I've been a that I help uh, found, is it found, help find, help create with my buddy Paul a long time ago. And this is what our 20 some, it feels like we've been at it for like more than 20 years. It's, uh, we, I mean. That's insane. That, that's insane to think of, of the length of, because you have a lot of guys that are still core members. I mean, I would say yeah. over half the league. And when I looked at it, being in it for six years, I was like, wow, like that seemed like a long time to me, but yeah, you guys have got some really long-standing members, and um, yeah, big history. I mean, yeah, geez. I mean, you talk about it. We've seen guys like Randy Johnson. We've seen guys like Pedro Martinez, Barry Bonds, Albert Pujols. Held the same team. We had both Albert Pujols and Barry Bonds on the same team, and ended up winning like a million championships in the early to mid two thousands, late two thousands. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, you name it. We we've seen all the greats: Manny Ramirez. Uh, Derek Lowe was relevant both as a starting pitcher and as a relief pitcher. And I know he was vital to a lot of uh, team success throughout the 2000s. And then, of course, my guy, Joey Votto, which 
uh, you know, I ended up, I like Joey Votto so much. You dropped the, him the other day. I did. I did. It looks like, uh, the, the allure of him coming back ran out and I go, I got to make room, bud. I'm sorry. I got to, I got to let you go. But uh, Joey Votto was a part of my core back in the early 2010s, uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. And, uh, of course everything is, uh, perpetual. It seems like in, in baseball and in fantasy baseball that Joey Votto ended up on my team again, but let's start with your team. As you can see, these are the power rankings according to CBS, uh, based on record and points and, and uh, the breakdown, which is the breakdown is if you were to play every team every week, how would you fare? What would your record be? And where are you? You're sixth. Yeah, you're sixth overall. And in the standings, you are in second place behind me by a full game, even though I scored 300 more points than you do. But go figure. And uh, let's well, I don't know, man. Well, let's uh, I don't I don't think we talked about it back in March, but what has been your what was your strategy coming into the season, especially keeping in mind that there was going to be a lot of rule changes. Uh, did, did How did you combat those rule changes coming into draft season this year? Yeah, I mean, honest, I usually stick to this, th this league here, the strategy for me, I know people like closers and they get their points, but I just I try to go starting pitching um you know I the keepers that I had are all young obviously I try to keep the young keepers I was able to trade for Julio Rodriguez bring him in uh Kyle Tucker uh who's the other one it was Kyle Tucker him oh and then Michael Harris Michael Harris just absolutely killed me at the beginning of this half of the season he's he started to turn around a little bit but um yeah. and then I kept two starters so basically I mean honestly it's all to me it's all about balance in this league because um man everybody in this league is on top of it so like if there's a guy that's out there that's doing good or, you know, that's, that's coming up, they're going to be on top of it. They're going to be picking him up. So it, it was really a matter of just balance um, with the pitch, during, especially during the draft, just trying to balance that starting rotation, trying to get enough st uh, starting pitching. Because I'm huge on spot starting. I like I like dropping a guy, picking him up based on their matchups. Um, so uh, but I, I the last couple of years I've made it to the playoffs, but it's like I just don't have enough to get over the edge. So. Um, I was trying to get a few more starting pitchers that were solid and I don't think it quite worked out the way that I wanted because uh, a couple of them are already gone and a trade that I did with you Mr. Uh, uh, Woodruff that I got from you last year has been on the DL I think for the entire I mean I think he might have pitched a couple weeks but he looks like he might come back beginning of August so hey we'll there you go there you go him and uh, his his um his depleted fastball, apparently. Uh, quick shout out to Johnny Ortega saying, uh, joining us this evening. He says that he is 12 and two in his money league. So congratulations there. It's always nice. good to be on the driver's seat. Like I tell people, man, I'd rather be, what was the record again? I forgot already. I'd rather be 11 and six and 10 and seven any day. I tell you that much. But <laughs> as you can see, uh, I mean, you got some, uh, some really good players on this team. You got Christian Walker, who, well, you got some steady guys. I wouldn't call like guys I get excited about. I mean, I do like Jonathan, India, but he's a steady guy. You know, he's uh, and now he's on a trade block. That's how much the Reds think about him. Like he's on a trade block because all their their prospects are coming up. Uh, My White like, Sox, possibly. <laughs> Jonathan India to the White Sox. Well, the White Sox have shown interest. Do I think that'll happen? Absolutely not. But that's been a little chatter. Yeah. But why now? Why not last year or, or, or <laughs> earlier in the year when they really needed him? The White Sox are dead. And well, I'm not going to say too much because of the the standings and the AL central, but at any rate, I mean, you got Ellie, the Cruz who's become your super prospect here. So good yeah. job there. Uh, I picked him up after the draft. I was looking at the top 100. I'm like, I started researching, doing my research and he was sitting there. I said, you know what? Let me grab him. And the next thing I know he's on the fast track and he was up. I was like, Oh, and it's kind of nice because I can, I can kind of swap him out with my, my, my boy, Matt Chapman, who disappoints me every other week. Um, <laughs> you know, so I try to balance him and just rotate him in between other guys. Um, based on matchups or the number of games they have. So a good pick on the Sean Murphy. You got Danny Diaz as your backup. But I, mean, I don't know, man. There's a lot of hitters. Why do you need so many uh, bench players on this team for when we know pitching is kind of king in this league? What's up with that? I don't know. I I'm, I'm like, you, but see that that's my, my ego, right? Like I feel like if a hitter goes down, I got somebody to plug right in and we can pick mm -hmm. up where we left off. Um, like C.J. Abrams and what is it, Riley Green. Riley Green was uh, on the injured list, and he was on fire before he got hurt. And then when he, he was dropped, then when I saw him coming back, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to scoop him up again. And he seems to, I mean, in my opinion, I think he's kind of breaking out. So hopefully down the stretch he can help me out. But the pitching, it's my ego. I feel like, oh, I could spot start. I could pick guys up that, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, based on matchups. And uh, it, you know what, to my defense, though, I do have the stat here. I do believe I am the uh, leading, um, what is it, uh, decision maker in the league this year. I'm at 86% accuracy. 
You've been beating the uh, the, the so called experts at CBS. Yeah, so called CBS experts. Um, I got a uh, fourteen correct uh, decision. Yeah, eighty six percent uh, or eighty two percent success rate. So uh, I've been I've been doing something right, but yeah, <laughs> that, that pitching though, like like dude, the pitching kills me though. Like I think this year overall though, I think like you have Kirby and. Yes. I have like Castillo, right? These guys are pitching good. They're not getting the wins. They're not getting the points in those categories. Mm -hmm. So like even we, well, Wheeler's struggled, but Wheeler still, he, I mean, games where he should, you know, get the win, they're not getting the wins. They're not getting the points. That's mm -hmm. really what I've noticed and what I've struggled with. But yeah, I don't have anything that jumps out. I don't think, you know what I mean? Like nothing that you're like, oh, wow, this guy's really, you know, handling his business, but yeah, enough, it's a enough to do okay. I like your pitching staff a little bit better than some of your hitters uh, uh, in terms of scope and overall. Uh, yeah. I see that you got my guy Logan Taylor Allen as uh, that's he seems to be passed around like like a <laughs> basketball. I guess I had him and Melvin had him for a for a second, and then now you're picking him up. So everybody in my little circle and who was connected with me has had a shot at Logan Taylor Allen. Um, I was hoping to pick bring him back to my team, but that wasn't going to happen. Instead, I ended up getting Tanner Bibby. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, uh, yeah, the Grand Master was a guy I drafted. And I just kind of lost uh, patience with him and then he got hurt. So, I mean, I can't keep everybody on my team. We can only keep 22 players on a roster. And that's the, I think that's a pretty cool thing about this league is because uh, in my other leagues, we, we were keeping anywhere between 27 and 30 players. Here wow. it's 22. So now you really have to decide. You, 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 your decision making skills are really tested to the max here. So that's a pretty cool challenge. But you know, conversely, there should be plenty of players available um, on waiver wires to help you out. So I see, yeah. And the reason I asked about the 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 lack of depth and pitching is because it seems like a lot of teams, a lot of the teams, a lot of owners in this league would rather have uh, more pitchers than hitters on the bench because they can, uh, uh, you know, account for the two start weeks for some of these guys. And of course, like you mentioned, they could stream pitchers on matchups and just have them on the reserve ready for the following week. But you you don't you're not worried about that. You don't, are you just going to wave like a, most of these guys and, you know, keep your core of Castillo and Wheeler. That's Luis Castillo and Zach Wheeler. I should say, in case people get confused, you're, you're not afraid that, 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 that might, that might come and bite you in the butt later on. We're not having, having that lack of depth there. No, you know, no, because I mean, Woodruff, if he comes back, right. Woodruff, mm -hmm. and if we have Castillo and Wheeler doing what they're supposed to do in theory, they're doing, and honestly, Bello, that kid's been pretty incredible himself. He may not, I know he's not a big strikeout guy, but he, he, he wins ball games and he's been doing good. And then Abbott's been steady for me. Ashcraft has potential, but you never know. Uh, you know, but the thing is, is again, it's my own, it's my own little ego. I, I look at matchups and then I go, the minute the week starts, I'm already looking at the next two, <laughs> two start pitchers that are on the on the on the you know the the waiver wire yeah and i'm picking and plugging in as it goes because the way it's been so far knock on wood i've been able to rotate like next week i think this week i got three two start pitchers next week i got three two start pitchers so it's going to be where i can just fill one more guy in and other teams they're also using closers right so they can't really take advantage of you know, they, I think what, what happens is the more options you have at pitcher, the more likely you're to say, oh, well, this guy's got two starts, so I'm going to start him, even though the matchup probably wasn't as good as the one matchup as a guy that they could have put in. Because I've seen that, like, somebody started Rich Hill against me for, I think, last week for, for two starts, and, like, there was somebody else they started, and I was like, mm, the matchups weren't good, but they did it just based out of sheer volume, thinking that was well, exactly. And, yeah. and that's the one thing I wish about this league that they had, like some sort of punishment for churning and burning through the waiver wire like that and give some some incentive for future planning, for, for thinking long term instead of the short term. I get that it's a head to head weekly. Weekly is the key word, weekly league. And yeah. it's a points league. So like you said, volume is king. But there has to be something to be said about being smart and not just getting a two start pitcher for the sake of doing a two start pitcher for that week. Whereas, yeah, I mean, and, and there's been plenty of times where, yeah, I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, you know, they got nine starters. I got, let's say seven. And I'm like, but I, I, I will, I refuse to just start a two start pitcher if like they're facing, you know, uh, Dodgers you know, and Mariners, yeah, Dodgers and Mariners. And, and uh, you know, I, listen, I'm not starting him. I don't care how many, how owned he is in a league, you know, unless he's like, you know, a stud, which if he's a stud, he's not going to be on the, on the waiver wire to begin with. But right. Yeah. I just, I, 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 I honestly just roll with matchups. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, for the most part, I mean, there are some times where it's a toss up, right? Like, okay, well maybe this guy might be okay, but all right, I'll give the two star guy a chance, but. Um, well, well, the you know. reason, the reason, uh, 
actually no not the reason you'll be you'll be happy to know that uh your guy here the black hole army felipe's team um i was able to win my matchup last week despite the fact that my opponent had nine starting pitching uh starting pitching games uh scheduled yeah. and i only had five but mm. unlike you i actually do believe in my closers and boy let me tell you about my closers as this is my team now uh, I'll start with the pitching since, you know, you were, we were talking about pitching. Let me talk about my closers, man. Felix Bautista and Camilo Duvall are the goods. Well, and I'm and he's got five wins for you, too. Yeah, well, that's because he has five blown saves. But we're not we're not here to talk about the negativity. We're here about to talk about the <laughs> points, <laughs> positive about the attributes I got here. And, and uh, I, I'm pretty proud of myself because I, I always I don't target the the best relief pitchers, the best bullpen guys. I always target the guys on the back end of the top 10, top 12, top 15. This year, mm-hmm. Felix Bautista was number seven overall in my rankings. And uh, number 10 was Camilo Doval. And I targeted those guys. And, you know, it, to give you an example of years past, last year, number 10 was Jordan Romano. And I remember, I remember telling myself in all my drafts, I want this guy. I want him. He's going to have a big season. Unfortunately, I might have rated him too low. And he got snatched up by everybody but me. Uh, and then the year and years past, I've picked up on guys like David Bednar. It's like I always pick up the relievers that uh, hit it big before they hit it big. So mm-hmm. I got, I have that going for myself. And this year, Felix Bautista and Camilo Duvall just landed right on my lap. Nobody wanted them where, you know, where I thought they would be at their most valuable. And my that was my advantage. And they've been my rock because my team has been riddled with injuries and inconsistency, uh, you know, I drafted what's this guy's uh from Tristan McKenzie. Drafted him thinking that he was gonna be because first and foremost, as you know, uh Kerry, I kept five hitters. I had no pitchers yeah. coming in. You had no pitchers going in that draft. And McKen- McKenzie was actually a guy that I was targeting myself too. So yeah. So <laughs> it, it sucked, but you know, I but I and I go, you know, I have these five really great hitters. I don't need to draft hitters, you know, the all the best ones are taken anyway, so I'm just going to focus on pitching. That's what I did. Tristan McKenzie, Hunter Green. I drafted way too many Reds players, but I was all in on the Reds before they were. It was a cool thing to say. I ended up getting credit. Graham Ashcraft, Nick Dodolo. I was all in yeah. on the Reds, man. I've been all in like, on the Reds since last year. Go ahead. I feel like I got to give you more credit than I normally want to here. Yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, you were you were high on the Reds. Yeah, yeah. yeah Even last year. I might have been too early on the Reds, but I go, you guys just got – I mean – when I look at the Reds, I do get a lot of uh, feelings that the way I used to get feelings about the Cubs when they were coming up with Chris mm-hmm. Bryant, Javier Baez. Not that those guys on in Cincinnati are are are, are going to end up like Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, Anthony Rizzo, Kyle Schwarber, but they got themselves a nice little core coming up, and they're all getting called up right after another after another. Imagine if they actually had really good pitching; they'd be a much bigger threat. They would be so buzzworthy. But you got Andrew Abbott. I saw that. I'm still waiting on Hunter Green to get back. Nick Lodolo, I still believe in. You ended up getting Graham Ashcraft off waivers. Um, what is but up with Hunter Green anyway? What I, I don't even. It, it's, I, it's a hip. It's a oh. hip injury, I believe. Let me see. What does that say here? Yeah, hip. Just been waiting. Just like I've been waiting on all my hitters to come back, and I'll get to my hitters. But yeah, uh, unlike you, I do have um, the two closers, but I also have the three guys I count on and I lean on heavily: it's Zach Allen, Tyler Glassnow, and George Kirby, and a bunch of youngsters. Uh, and it's it's a scary proposition. It really is to depend on uh, depend on young prospects like that to get you through the hump of a baseball season, whether it's real baseball or fantasy baseball. But I'm telling you, I'm doing this out of necessity, not because I'm trying to be fancy here. But as I, I tell Sean, I tell anybody, I, I even told Angel on Sunday, pitching is really weak, and it's not nothing to do with the rule changes. It this was the same pattern I noticed last year. It's the same pattern I noticed this year. Whatever's left over after the draft, it's it's not very good. So might as well go after guys like there he is, Yuri Perez, who I had him I, I had as my number one pitching prospect coming into the season, um, based on just ability and the chance that he'll get called up and help his team right away. Logan Allen was number two because I thought the Guardians were gonna uh bring him up sooner rather than later, and he would have been effective right away. But other guys like Bobby Miller, he's number five on my list here. Uh, Tanner Bibby was number 10. I had Reese Olsen for a while. He was number nine on my list. So a little bias for the prospects because of that, because of the hard work I did in the offseason. But it's paid off dividends. And i uh, just been, plug- like you mentioned, been plugging in the right matchups and putting them in the best position to succeed. And I've it's been working so far. It's a scary proposition, but it's been working. And 
of course, if they ever get their act together, the upside is there for them to do more than just be streaming matchups, uh, streaming options, I should say. Like Grayson Rodriguez, I, as you know, I'm very high on him. Uh, yeah, he, since... he was part of our trade last year, yeah. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, all I had to do was give up Brandon Woodruff. You gave me something else, but it wasn't much. Yeah, we. It was a pick something. It was you know what? It, and it was it was you know, and that's that's the thing about this league too. We we can trade draft picks, and I just cannot bring myself to just rob myself of all my top picks of the next year. So I I just cannot give out like a bunch of top picks. And it's like when we got when we brokered that trade, it was like it was. It was a there was a, a first rounder in there, but um it wasn't that high. And it was like I needed pitching help now for that for that playoff run, which yep. ultimately didn't work out anyway. But I mean, is what it is. You know, you your team though, like to be where it's at, considering the injuries, I, I mean, you you've got to be pretty happy because I am ecstatic, yes. Your core your core hitters are just I mean, dust I mean Aaron Judge. You have a scary lineup when they're all healthy. Yeah. And I mean, that a, a, the good core chunk of them have been hurt all year. Well, not all year, but I mean, a good, good portion of it. No, it's been uh, basically the majority of the season that if you would have told me that all of three fifths of my keepers, because I kept Bo Bichette, yeah. Manny Machado, <laughs> and by the way, Machado, 312 on base percentage is brutal to look at right now. Just absolutely brutal. Very disappointed in him, especially after what he showed last year that. He might be finally uh, getting into that group of consistency. Juan Soto's on the team, and all I got is a three-toll on base percentage and inconsistent play, although he's been on fire lately. But, you know, I need him to step it up if I'm going to go places this year. But, yeah, but Bichette, Machado, and then I got Jordan Alvarez, young guy, what can go wrong? And, yeah, sure enough, he got injured for a long period of time, oblique muscle issue. Those are fucking tough. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. Mike Trout, uh, that's a freak injury. Uh with the uh mm-hmm. with the with the hit by pitch on the on the on the wrist so he broke he fractured something there and he i think did he, he had surgery on a swing? i think he did, i don't i thought he fractured it on a swing I don't oh think he got on that i thought he got hit by a pitch well regardless it's a wrist injury so that's a risk even when he comes back that's yeah. risky as hell and yeah. august 3rd is the earliest like i was seeing reports that he might be back by september so uh, you know, if anybody wants him, he's there available because Duran, Jaron Duran is 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 my god savior. Team Mexico, hey, yeah, over there. he's been, whew, he's been, he's been uh, steady. When did he got called up recently? Did, well, no, has he been up? No, he's been up this whole time. But we saw Jaron Duran like absolutely demolish the ball earlier in the year, and then he went into this awful, god awful uh, slump for about a month where he just looked very ordinary and. And he he's just got picked up lately. He started picking it up lately again. And I I, I pounced on him like, all right, give, give him back to me. Give him back to me. Team Mexico <laughs> all the way. Let's go. Because uh, he's really super fast. And, and, he, and he has a little bit of pop in his bat. But And he plays for a, a, a surprisingly good, interesting team in Boston. But yeah, Mike Trout got injured. And then Aaron Judge, who I was told. He's supposed to come back, isn't he? He was supposed to come back two months ago. Oh. Who knew that toes could be so sensitive? And, and now it's August 1st, maybe. But yeah, I, so meanwhile, I've just been depending on on nobodies like Jaron Duran, uh, Spencer Steer, who's just there waiting for me to pick again. All the Reds players, Cincinnati. Will Benson, yeah. you know, uh, it, it's been a godsend to have these guys just waiting on waivers. And, and it's not like these guys are, are are superstar players in the makings. They still got other young players who have a lot of work to, to do on their own, but they have enough potential where it's it should have been everybody's intent to maybe pick these guys up sometime during the season. And for whatever reason they didn't. So their loss is my gain. And that's how I've been able to stay above water to I'm, I'm even surprised at the results myself. So. Yeah. When I look at your team, I'm like, man, I was like, I, I mean, like, I mean, I, I had a rough go to the beginning of the season. My pitching was all horrendous. Yeah. So I've won six in a row, which has kept me back, you know, brought me back into it. But your team, I'm like, why, why? I don't know what is going on here. Because if you're doing this now, I mean, if you have that full lineup, what what is that? I mean, man, imagine what that would look like. Well, if that knowing my happen. knowing my dumb luck, when all those guys were healthy, I was uh, I had an inconsistent team. So watch, they come back and they <laughs> suck again. And like, what? It will be like last year when I was trying to tank, and all of a sudden I started winning. So then I that traded all. So I tried crazy. trading for the uh, for the playoff run, and and I did my math wrong, and now I'm trading again to tank again, and 
<laughs> what a this league is so frustrating. But all right, let's let's talk about besides our teams. Let's quickly go to the other squads here. Started from the bottom to the top. Texas Sooner, the worst team according to the power rankings. Uh, what's he's his... just keeping all kinds of prospects. That's all he's doing. I don't know. His he's he's keeping a bunch of minor leaguers. He's stocking up for some reason. That's his mo. When he knows that things are bad, he's gonna wave the white flag like in April and just give up on the season. He's three and fourteen so far. And of course, I I think I'm playing him this week, so that you means are. I'm gonna lose to him. Dude, he almost beat me last week in a very low scoring affair. I had no business <laughs> winning that game, but I'll take it. <laughs> so that, I'll take. It. That's his strategy, but yeah, he's. Uh, and it's worked for him because I think he's won championships just going through that route, just constantly uh, rebuild, rebuild, destroy, rebuild, destroy, rebuild, destroy, rebuild, and just snatch up all the prospects that you can. I don't know how that works in terms of his keepers, but but we'll yeah, take a I mean, look. And that's what I was looking at. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, from a keeper standpoint, just looking at his team, I'm like, I I mean, yeah, you can keep the minor leaguers, but I, I, don't, I just don't see a lot of potential in a lot of his other guys. But I mean... A to each their own. I mean, like you said, he's won championships. He's he's done very well in the past. So yeah, I mean, he has guys who are like well, well down below the minor leagues. So I, I know we got two minor league slots. So maybe that's a strategy. Is he's expecting some of these double A, triple A guys to get called up, and then that he'll have those uh, single A and guys who just got promoted to double A who are not going to get promoted anytime soon again uh, in his back pocket and protect them in their slots but i mean i would look at this team and say that maybe jt real muto has to be a keeper bobby witt jr has to be kept even though oh i didn't his... see soto yeah soto juan soto is definitely being kept yeah. and even masata masataka yoshida is a good player to keep it's just i mean he has horses i don't know i mean jackson holiday he just i think he just got recently promoted to double a and that's matt holiday's kid so it's like oh and he's got jazz hurt over there too so th there's another guy and i know he could blame it on the injuries well jazz got hurt well you know i don't have a second baseman a permanent second and, baseman and so, o'neill cruz <laughs> i just noticed that too oh hurt. well o'neill cruz uh got injured so that's it i'm gonna wave the white flag well i, I lost aaron judge jordan alvarez and who's the other guy mike trout and i don't give up so yeah no i agree i'm not you mm, i would not be giving up till the absolute last second to be honest with you yeah, and I know the pitching is awful, so I could see why he would want to start over. But, I mean, all of his prospects that he picked up are on the offensive side of things. So, yes. I don't get it. I don't understand. But it's worked for him in the years past, and I'm pretty sure that he'll be able to flip some of these players for some draft picks as owners get uh, desperate. But, you know, it's it's whatever. I got the guys that I want. I got Yuri Perez and Noel B. Marte on my protected slot, so I'm good with that. We go over to Melvin's team. Melvin is uh, seven and ten now, with a two-game losing streak. Been very, very quiet this season. Usually, he's a big chirper, you know. I know in the other in the other league last year, he was chirping a lot because he got off to a really good start, but he's been getting a little bit humbled lately. I know but he's the, a chirper on the uh, on the uh, the Facebook page uh, pages, yeah, but, but even that, yeah. I feel like I haven't seen him as much uh, talking. No, he's been humbled a little bit. I'm telling you, you know, <laughs> he finally beat me last week uh, in our other league. So, congratulations, mm -hmm. Melvin. You're you're one and three against Felipe in, in two leagues. Good job. <laughs> so, but what sticks out? Let's let's start. Let's talk specific players. Uh, name me one player that you want to shed the spotlight on for better or for worse here. Start, um, a guy who was really nice for me towards the end of the season, Stephen Kwan. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. He 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 put up much better numbers last year. I. You know, I mean, I'm not a big uh, behind the scenes, like, you know, uh, stat guy, but I don't know what his power projections were or what it was coming into the league. But I I thought I targeted him in the draft. He got to him before I did. So and I'm actually kind of happy he did because he was <laughs> one of the top maybe five left fielders last year in our league. And now it's just not there, at least not there to what I thought it would be. Right, right. And I've. I was not a big fan of, and, and I just got done talking to Angel Morales on Sunday about the him and Brian Reynolds are guys I never trusted mm, just remember, because, yeah. and I don't, and, and yeah, people say, well, the shift is gone. So he should even be better now. And by the way, Stephen Kwan was the 46th best hitter on, on my rankings. You asked how many home runs was he projected to hit? Let me check. I had, I had him as the 14th best outfielder. So yeah, even I had him ranked pretty high, but I was still avoiding him because I just don't trust him. Seven home runs was the projection okay, so, according to right. Ariel Cohen. Uh, but the the big draw for Stephen Kwan is that 
he doesn't strike out a lot and he has very good pitch recognition, but he's a punch and Judy hitter who's a, who hit for average, provide you some on base percentage, but won't provide much of a pop. Ariel Cohen had him at a 395 slugging. So he's right there at 373. You get what you paid for. I mean, but even, I mean, like I said, even I had him ranked high, but it's a points league, right? So you still get points for hitting singles and he's a, he, he does a good job of recognizing pitches. So you, you know, four balls equals one walk. That's a point right there. And uh, so maybe that you played know, a role in why he got ranked so high. But what's great though is he's but, actually on pace, like I'm looking at what he did last year. He's, I mean, he's actually almost on pace to what he to what he did last year. Yeah, well, not that far yeah. off. So yeah. that's kind of strange. He seems so much better in the second half last year. <laughs> I, I I always was wary of him because he 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 he's a sing. Even though he has wonderful play discipline in terms of fantasy. And in yeah. real life baseball, he he provides one dimension and one dimension only. That's batting average. Yeah. He he hits his way on, and of course he takes his walks. But he'll his production is that he hits himself. He hits his way to first base, um, uh, and it's usually going to be singles, right? That he's a he's a punch and Judy hitter. That's why I don't trust him, especially considering who else is around him. And of course, I just lost my spot. Oh, there he is, number. Four. Uh, what would I say? Forty sixth overall. I mean, George Springer. I had I had. Quan ahead of George Springer, ahead of Andres Jimenez, ahead of O'Neill Cruz, ahead of JT Real Muto. Those the two guys we just mentioned on the other team, uh, Luis Robert, and that's because Luis Robert is always hurt. But I, I actually would have preferred Luis Robert over Stephen Quan just because Robert has immense upside. But you know, it, it's there's two types of people: the people that want the steadiness of Stephen Quan are the ones who are going to hit for the fences and pick up Luis Robert. Just depends what you're looking for. But yeah, I was not. Even though I ranked them pretty high, I still was avoiding him at all costs. Uh, and then there's Jared Klenick's on his team too. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> he ends up with Jared Klenick as well. Uh, not because it's it's weird or anything. It's just because um, the back, that's the complete opposite of Stephen Kwan, right? The, the big strikeout. Dude, that, that guy. Is. And I even I I think I drafted him, and then he kind of struggled. Then I was able to pick him up. Then I dropped him, and then he started doing well when he got picked up again. And he's I mean, well, now what? I think he broke his foot kicking a cooler. So there we yeah. are. Yeah, and and for as much as Stephen Kwan is the very you know savvy plate discipline guy, plate uh, awareness guy, he does have Jared Kalenic on the bench, Jack Sawinski on the bench, and Anthony Volpe on the bench. All of these guys have well over a hundred strikeouts for the season. So yeah, look at that. Uh, so yeah, but again, uh, they have some upside that's worth having around, I guess, but. That's definitely cutting into his wins and losses this year. Uh, Dylan Seas, I'm pretty sure he was kept from last year, and he's been a major disappointment, which I tried to warn people about Dylan Seas last year. I told you guys. I, I hate to toot my own horn, but I told you guys, this guy's command issues are still a real thing. Don't let last year fool you into thinking that those are resolved. There's always a chance that he might revert back to that. That being said, uh, where did I have C's ranked at? Uh, I, oh, I had him 15th because of those issues that I was so concerned about. 15th overall, and I was avoiding I assume, him too. I, so I I avoided, well, if he was out there. I, I, I was just leery of him just based on, you know, again, with the control issues, with all that, I didn't expect him to fall back as much as he did this year, but um, there, there was no way he was going to keep up what he did last year. Like the, that was just, I don't know, there, there was bound to be regression. And it's like, I, I cannot pay a steep price for somebody that is, you, you just don't know what kind of regression you're going to get. I just realized that we have some comments here. Uh, Texas sooner, the guy that we just kind of made fun of for having all those prospects. He was last year's champion. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> He's so bad. this year. That's why I said, you know what, listen, I, I, I seen all the, the minor leaguers on there, everything I seen what he was doing. And I'm like, well, like I, the dude's been successful before, so I'm not I'm not doubting his process. Well, well here, here's the secret to success, Kerry. He auto drafted last year. Oh, <laughs> not aware of that. <laughs> I, I know all about that, don't I? Yeah, I've been accused of that before. But you know, I also led the league that year in in transactions. So, the team that the computer drafted looked a lot different. Is all I'm going to say, Melvin. My damn team, man. My damn team. Ah, it is what it is. Yeah. Do better. I don't know. I mean, uh, Berlin not doing what he. I mean, there's there's a couple guys that are underachieving. Yeah. yeah, and 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 not to slam them too hard. I mean, I do like AJ Puke. I just um, I don't, I don't know what the Marlins are going to do from week to week with their bullpen situation. 
uh, Alex Lang I had for a while, and then he just sh sh uh, completely imploded on himself. And I'm like, never again am I trusting a Detroit Tigers pitcher. Ever. Yeah. I'm done with them. Never again. I do like Bailey Over. So he has some guys, but yeah, they, they, that's, that's how it's, he has a lot of work to do here. Uh, a lot of work to do. All right, let's move on to the next team here. Uh, Tim Beer Bailey Mashers, number 10. That guy's usually pretty damn good. And this year, he can't do anything right. Eight and nine, though. So he's uh, he's holding himself above water a little bit. But he's and he's a scary team because, yeah, he's eight, and, he's eight and nine now, but he never gives up. He's the complete opposite of, of Johnny, of the Texas Sooner, because he can be eight and nine. He's still going to acquire players to help him for the stretch run. And next thing you know, he's has over 10 wins, might be close to 15 wins or some crap like that. And he's on the he's he's on the verge of making the playoffs yet again. So let's take a look at his team really quick. And right off the bat, literally off the bat, Vladimir Guerrero, Rafael Devers. This looks like my baseball life league te uh, team. So he has some promising bats here. That... I tried pulling Devers from him a few times and we I'm couldn't sorry, work who? It out. I tried pulling Devers from him a few times and we couldn't work it out. Yeah, and that's part of the reason why his team's so lousy is that Devers. Yeah, you know, the home run is there, the power is there, but three thirty four on base percentage with a two sixty five batting average, that's going to frustrate you. I know this because I have him in two of my other teams, and he's he's a frustrating player to have. That's why you don't trust those left handed hitters. Says the guy who is riding the Will Benson train on on his own team, despite the fact that he doesn't play every day. Not but yeah, your destination with Yelich there for a long time. Oh my God. <laughs> I think I'm done with that whole thing. I've been looking for the next, yeah, my, the next guy, my next Christian Yelich, you know who it was, right? It was uh, the guy that the uh, uh, Nationals got in the Juan Soto trade, Robert Hassel III. And oh. he's been awful this year. Yeah. Just awful. As soon as he got, as soon as he wore that Nationals represented minor league uniform, he just, I don't know what happened. It's like his feelings <laughs> got hurt. Like he wasn't a Padre anymore and he started being bad again. But now he has some guys. He has both the Texas Rangers hitters right there, and Ezekiel Duran and Leore Taveras, who we've been talking about a lot lately as guys who are uh, solidify that Texas Rangers uh, lineup from being too top heavy. So, I mean, there's a lot to like here. Julian. He I'm, picked I'm sorry, up what? Julian this week, I think, the twin second baseman who's been on a nice tear. I don't know if he'll hold that, but he, he, he was one of the more picked up players in fantasy over the past few weeks. Yeah, I probably should have been on that, but I'm trusting Brendan Donovan for the time being. But Edward Julian, uh, you know, you can't – yeah, says the guy who's been trusting nothing but pitching prospects this year. You can't trust too many of these uh, prospect hitters, especially a guy like Edward Julian who has a high hit tool, but we don't know what else he can bring. I know that Sean is in absolute love with him. I know that much. But the Twins have options everywhere at, at any time. So that kind of worried me about – a little bit about him. But that, that is a good pickup because he has a lot of promise as I'm trying to look for him and I can't find them in my prospect list. Oh, my God. So, yeah, uh, I messed up my 51st best prospect coming into the season. And it's all because I don't know what the Twins are doing with their prospects. Because <laughs> when they get called up, they don't get – you're a Sox fan. You've seen the Twins. When Dude, when yeah. Twins prospects get called up, you don't know what the hell they're going to do with them. Well, what's his name? Uh, well, he's kind of hit now. What is it, what's the name? Krilkoff? Yeah, Alex he, Kirilov. Alex Kirilov. 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 There you go. Yeah, he's finally, he's finally doing something. But him, man, I, I tried putting my faith in him a few times over the past few years. I'm like, this, I'm done. I'm done. I won't even talk. Yeah, no. That's good. Yeah, I, I wouldn't touch Minnesota prospects. <laughs> Robert defending Melvin's team. A Mel is doing good considering the team he inherited. Okay, he made trades to try to improve his team, and somehow he made it worse. There, I said it. I said it. I said the thing that was not supposed to be said. I will not. No, I am not taking any excuses from Melvin. No, uh, uh, do better. Yeah, he, on, yeah, he's former army. Put your boots on, or whatever that saying goes. Strap your boots. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Hua, I was, go ahead. I interrupted you. No, no, no. I, I just, I, <laughs> I think he was part of the. Uh, I don't know if I traded Seager to him in the off season. I believe you did. Yeah, he, yeah. He, I actually moved Seager and Acuna to him. Then he moved Acuna to somebody else. He had Ronald Acuna, and then immediately traded him. I think it was a Justin Verlander deal. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. He didn't inherit anything. He. He was already making moves to sculpt the team into his image. And somehow he let Acuna go. It is unforgivable. There, I said it. Because if Felipe would have done something stupid like that, look, oh, I don't know, drop Francisco Alvarez a couple of weeks ago and settle for Patrick Bailey, and now he's stuck with Bo Naylor. You guys would have been after me like crazy already. <laughs> True story, I know, I by the way. Yeah, I would have. I would have. 
who's whose team is it? Oh, Tim Creasy, right? Uh, Garrett Cole, Logan. I mean, I love his pitching. So if his pitching can come together, that's a dangerous team. Oh, Eduardo Rodriguez. There's a guy that I've been. I you know what? And I put my God. I've had him on so many teams, and he never did nothing. And then I was like, no, not this year. And look at him. Look at him. I mean. It's the Tigers, so he's not getting wins, but he's putting together a pretty decent season for himself. Yeah, we talked about him on Sunday. That he, that the, are they justified for giving him all that money? Like, well, they are now. I mean, the he, the Tigers are being pesky this season in that crap ass division, and yeah, you know, he has some really good closers in Joan Duran and David Bednar. The mm-hmm. problem is that they don't, they're not going to get a lot of opportunities. Yeah, nineteen saves, seventeen saves compared to guys like. Oh, I don't know. Felix Bautista and Camille Duvall, who the Giants and the Orioles respectively are counting with all their lives to get and, them and, and who those has saves. Them? I, I don't I don't remember who has them. Oh, that's me, man. I'm sorry. Oh. I, I didn't think I had to specify, <laughs> but that's me. Let's move on to the next team here. That's Tim's team. Be on the lookout for his team. I, I, I think he's a candidate to dig himself out of the dish he created for himself. Uh, Steven, the other Steven on this league, t- uh, Houston Steelers. Uh, what's that N- number nine on the power rankings? Where's that put him on the seven and 10? So he's right there tied with Melvin in that division. I'll show it to you the central division, the joke of a listen fantasy, real life. The central division is always a joke. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying. I mean, you have stats to back it up at least. Yeah. I mean, last I checked, seven wins, seven and 10 is worse than being 11 and seven. I'm just saying, Michael Jordan rules. Um, this has been a big disappointment. Dalton Varsho, I know that he's not a catcher anymore, so anything you get out of him as a catcher should be a win. But I don't know if I had Dalton Varsho, I don't know if I if I would trust him to to start him on a regular basis. Would you? No, no. Okay, and, so it's not just me. I don't know what. I, I, again, another guy high on my list, but I don't know what happened. Like, wh- <laughs> where did you go? Oh, he went to Toronto. That's the thing. And then he became a a, a regular playing time center uh, center or outfielder, not center fielder per se, but he does qualify center field in our league. Left field, all the outfield positions, all by the, the way. Field, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I'm very disappointed. I was so high on him and I, I was actually justifying the high price it would have taken to get a guy like Dalton Washer. Not that I would do it, but I could see anybody paying the high premium that was Dalton Varsho. It's a fast guy. Stolen bases are going to be a thing this year because of the rule of the rule changes, man. And yeah. it, he qualifies a catcher and he's not playing catcher. I love those guys. Who wouldn't want that? That's why I drafted MJ Melendez and both of those guys have sucked. So what do we know? We don't know nothing. Um, and there's Brian Reynolds. We just mentioned him. Another Brian, Brian De La Cruz also on this team. So uh, it's, it, it looks like a makeshift offense. So I can see why his team's seven and ten. I don't know what happened there. So that must mean he has very strong pitching, and not really, I guess. Uh, Kenley Jansen, uh, uh, ageless wonder that he is. He's on the team. Has little, yeah. Well, he has the whole. He has a whole congregation. He has a Christian, Javier, <laughs> and a Jesus Luzardo. Um, his team is not Chris for sale. And Clayton Kershaw is injured. And but th- these hurt right here. When you have minor leaguers you're waiting on, and both of them are hurt. Daniel Espino, unfortunately, I think he's out for the year due to shoulder, uh, mm-hmm. a shoulder injury. If I were him, I would just cut him and get somebody else that's better and just prowl and keep an eye on Espino. It's gonna be a while for him to get back. He's not coming any back anytime soon. So and Kyle Harrison, what's wrong with uh, that's the Giants' best pitching prospect? Hamstring. Yeah, he's had that for a while. I remember that. Um, I think, yeah. So yeah. Uh-huh. He dra- yeah, he drafted Varsho with his second pick. Oh, well, that's the virtual seventh round because he the five yeah. keepers. But still, that's uh that's hefty, man. That's a hefty price to pay for a guy who's on your bench not doing anything. So I could see why this team is seven and ten. I don't know what else he could do to improve this team except keep playing the waiver wire. I mean, he has a lot of uh low ceiling veterans on his team. So all right. Well, the commissioner was asking for it. Has he had we slammed his team yet? We are about to. And I think he's in our division out in the West. He's five and twelve. It looks like he's on. He was right there for a little bit, then all of a sudden started slipping. Well, the cream rolls to the top. That's what happened in that division. Felipe ended up being the best team available. I do like Josh Naylor. I was a big fan coming into the season. I know he got off to a really bad start, but no, no. I, I, you know what? And you know, you got them players that there's no particular reason why you hate them. I, I will tell you right now. I will never have him on my team. I will not. 
every time he plays the White Sox, he hits some big home run. And then that look on his face when he rounds the bases, it just pisses me off. So I, I, I don't care if it makes sense for me to have him on my team or not. I'm, I'm going to be emotional about Josh Naylor. <laughs> well, I forgot to mention that I have Vinny Pesquantino and not one, not two, but all three of my teams uh, coming into the season. Mm. And Josh Naylor was my backup first baseman, and then I cut him, and then Vinny Pasquantino got hurt. So here I am, tail between my legs, getting him back in, in the podcast league. So uh, I forgot to mention that I did have Vinny Pasquantino as well, as well. And excuse me, I have big plans. You know why I have big plans? And it all goes back to Joey Votto is because I thought Vinny P was going to be the next Joey Votto. Mm. And I wanted to be on the inside track of that. He got hurt. I missed out. Out for the year, shoulder injury. I don't know if he's ever going to be the same. But I hope really? he recovers fast. But yeah, he he was. Th- this is why I love doing that. You know, pick a veteran, and then have a high upside rookie or a high upside mm-hmm. player, minor leaguer. So I did that with Brandon Lau and Vaughn Grisham. That didn't work out. But I had Vinny Pasquantino. I I picked ahead, way ahead of Nate Lowe, and that worked out because Nate Lowe has been really good this year, and he ended up being my permanent first baseman. So that's just my way of saying i miss you vinnie pasquantino please come back stronger than ever because i will be looking out for you so this team what whose team is this again oh the commissioner's team so yeah, yeah um i i know his thing is that he doesn't put too much stock on, on offense but he does some some guys that i really like in gunner henderson um uh I, 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 I think gunner isn't gunner oh oh phone gunner is not um gunner i think is going to be fantastic i just just from a fantasy standpoint right now, he's not doing enough to, you know what I mean? Kind of carry you. That That's his thing. Now, Josh Jung, which I don't think he drafted. I think he picked him up. Hmm. Uh, that's been a nice pickup for him, but yeah. Yeah. Anderson, uh, yeah he just, I think he's going to be fine in the future. I just, it's just right now he's, he's still going through the motions of, you know, uh, he just, he, he's not, he's not doing enough from a fantasy pers- perspective to kind of carry you. Yeah. I, I, cause, I, I mean, cause I have him on both of my, um, Categories league, so there, there, there might be more of a yeah. of a value there than a points league where it needs to be immediate impact. It needs to be like now. Why need the points right now as opposed to a categories league? Well, if he's not getting uh, if he's not getting home runs, he can get a single, or he can steal a cheap base, or he can take a walk and get on base. So that's what he does with a three forty on base percentage. Yeah, that's definitely. I think that's more valuable in a deep uh, categories league than a a short. Uh, a, a short rostered uh, points league like this one. However, it is a keeper league. He's young. He's a hot shot yeah. prospect. So he has that going for himself. He might have the future, but he also has another future piece. Like you mentioned, Josh Young. Uh, Dave Primavera says, Naylor wants all that smoke. Yeah, he rocks the baby. And yeah. to the tune of 15 home runs and 507 yeah. slugging percentage, everybody would take that right now. Let's and, move on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I can, I, I will be, I'm just a hater. I, no good reason. <laughs> it's like with Tom Brady. I hate the man. He's a winner, but I hate him for no, you got them guys. You just hate for no reason. I don't yeah. got a good reason. It's just yes. face. It's face. Well, my reason, my reason is that Tom Brady was a fraud. Well, I mean, we, that's fraud. Yes. He is nothing without Bill Belichick. I don't care what he did in Tampa Bay. You saw that dream team they had to build around him just to anyway. I'm not. Gonna, this is not a football podcast. Screw Tom Brady. Yeah, I, I you know I we I would be winning championships too if I was in a weak division for like 20 years of my life. Let that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to continue because I I I side 100 percent with you, but I'm not going to go on my rant. <laughs> well, the thing with the. Uh, with Robert's team is that uh, he always focuses on pitching every, I mean, this is a guy who had Randy Johnson for like forever and a day, a long time. And, and I think he also had Derek Lowe as he, that's, that was his heyday when he had those pitchers going for him. And, and that's what he stuck with for most, for almost the majority of the time I've known him. And this year I cannot say the same. I, uh, this, this is a pretty plain pitching staff, even if it's fantasy, yeah. I do like Fran Valdez. I do like Hunter Brown, but it looks like Hunter Brown uh, with the 419 ERA and the 132 whip that he's kind of come down back to earth a little bit. Um, Cause he got off to a rock and start. He looked like he was the real deal. And, but you know, every uh, he's a rookie. It catches up to you, right? Not a rookie, but you know, doesn't have a lot of experience in this league. Um, and then of course he gets Michael Lorenzen who is the all-star, I don't trust that guy. I don't care. I saw that Michael no. Lorenzen is going to be a, a trade pickup in the in this trade deadline season. Like, why? Why do you people do this to yourselves? Don't do it. It's not worth yeah. it. I was kind of, I was kind of lost on that too. I, yeah, I, I was, I was shocked. I, yeah, this, I mean, what, wasn't he, was he with Cincinnati last year? I forget. I know he's always been with Cincinnati for a long time, but it doesn't matter. It's Michael Lorenzen. 
All right, let's see if I can make sense of this. Uh, uh, Primo is coming back to defend Melvin again. I, I got to call he... time out for one second, sir. Hang on. All right, I'm just going to read this comment anyway. So let me get this straight, Primo. Matt Olson and Justin Verlander and a, what, a first pick and a 13th overall? No, 13th round pick for Acuna and a third pick. So Matt Olson and Verlander with a 13th round pick for Acuna and a third. No, it's all about Acuna. Acuna is better than all those guys. There, I said it. He messed up. So whose team is this? So yeah, man, uh, Robert, you have a lot of pitchers. I don't like any of them, except for Fran Rivelda. So if you want to cut a deal with me, I am all ears. All ears. Let's see who's <laughs> next on the docket here. Ah, our guy Austin who was supposed to be here tonight, and he missed out. Uh, Austin has, for the last two years, helped me out big time to create these spreadsheets that I keep citing on my other computer screen. Austin, the Rocket City Trash Pandas. He's a big Angels fan. I believe that's the AA affiliate for the Angels of Anaheim, of Southern yeah, California, Inland Empire. Yeah. Uh, and just like in all the other leagues that I've noticed, he is even Steven, 8-8. Eight and eight. I believe he's like around 8-6 and six or 7-7 seven and seven in our podcast league. So he's it's been a frustrating season with him. And if he were here, he'd probably share that frustration because we put in a lot of work in this offseason. And... Good process, poor results is what it is. And, and, and even then, he's like even keeled, but I'm pretty sure he would want to be more than just a 500 team. Let's take a look at his team, Luis Arias. Ah, Luis Arias, man. What do you think? MVP candidate, Luis Arias, or just. I mean, great, great in real life, but fantasy, it's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, he's not really bringing a lot to the table fantasy wise. And it's, I mean, it's Miami, so it's not like he's going to score a lot of runs on the hits that he's getting, you know. So, yeah. And, uh, uh, Josh Young, Robert says that's his uh, rookie of the year pick, and hard to argue with that. Hard to argue with that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think who else is a rookie. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait it out. When Grayson Rodriguez wins me that championship later this year, throws a no hitter at the end of this season, I would love that. And boy, De La Cruz, he's going to pick it up. <laughs> Ellie De La Cruz is going to turn into O'Neill Cruz sooner rather than later. Well, maybe I should shut my mouth because I remember my two other teams. I hope for hope for a nice season from Ellie De La Cruz the rest of the season. All right, let's go back to what's this team again? This is Austin. Sorry. Oh, he has his namesake, Austin Hayes. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I remember when I had Felipe Vasquez before the uh, the incident with the 13 year old. It's nice while it lasted. I'm just saying. <laughs> I forgot that, about that. Yeah, I didn't. I think he just got sentenced not that long ago. Yeah, all the things to ruin a fantasy season. That's the thing that was my Waterloo that year. All yeah. of a sudden, my the pitching staff. Your spreadsheet can't predict, you know. Yeah, the variances, the the uncontrollable variables, the y-axis. I I get it, bro. But uh, yeah, once Felipe Velasquez, uh, Felipe Vasquez, or yeah, Felipe Vasquez went down. My pitching staff got exposed. Like he was carrying that team all the way through, and he got they got exposed. So anyway, uh, Austin uh, has some nice veteran players, uh, some big names who are not, who just appear not to be playing that big. But you look at their at their production, like Nolan Aronado, he has three hundred eighteen points. Francisco Lindor has three hundred sixteen points. You would think that would be good enough. And, and Paul Goldschmidt, three hundred eighteen points. And you would think that would Tatis. be good enough. And there's Tatis again. With, <laughs> he hasn't even played the full season, and he already has 300 points. So you would think that would be enough to put him over the top. And uh, there's just something lacking with this team, and I can't quite put my finger on it. I, although having Brandon Marsh, I'm pretty sure that hurts a lot. I wouldn't trust that guy. Uh, Esther Ruiz is injured, but is he? Is he? Val I guess he's valuable. I mean, 250 points from a punch and Judy hitter who steals a lot of bases. I guess that's okay. You can get a lot of points uh, in a league like this. I wouldn't do it, but. And again, this is another guy who's has a thin pitching staff. And he, I know he was counting a big time well, on Sandy Alcantara as well. But yeah, Sandy's been, I got him in my other league. Sandy's been a disappointment. <laughs> that's, that's you're going to hear this a lot, but this is why I was avoiding Sandy Alcantara. I did not believe that he had the strikeout potential. Does he now? 106 strikeouts in 100. So he's doing the same thing. Maybe uh, the bad luck is not on his side. Maybe, maybe hitters finally figured him out. Uh, I had him as a number 10 overall, even though he's a, uh, the Cy Young winner from last year. I, I, I just didn't trust him. Nate Ovalli, I love Nate. I, I would have rather had Nate Ovalli over Sandy Alcantara, which I did. I, I have shares of Nate Ovalli everywhere. But he's hurt again. Uh, what's wrong with him? Well, what was it again? He has, oh, he's just resting. Yeah, he needs to rest because he's been carrying that Rangers rotation because Jacob the Crumb can stay healthy. So 
Uh, good pickup by Carlos Estevez. I know that him and I talked about that a long time ago. Go ahead. I thought you were saying something. My bad. No, I lost. Uh, I lost um, uh, volume for a minute there. Okay. So I mean, there's some interesting pieces at pitching, but it's not enough to put him over the top. Uh, and yeah, he, he needs to maybe do some musical chairs at the at starting rotation. Look for another closer. Maybe that'll turn things around. You'd be surprised how closers can be a difference maker off of waivers just because just just because of uh the volatility of of that role itself you know people we see relief pitchers lose their their uh closing duties all the time year in year out and so maybe that's what he's waiting on maybe that could turn the season around maybe you know, we don't, do, do we really need s3 ruiz lars Newbar, and taylor ward on the same team but yeah because he's the outfield is pretty bad i guess so but anyway uh, I, he'll have to figure this out on his own, but you know, I consider him an expert, so he'll, he'll, I think he'll be okay. Uh, we talked about your team already, it sucked, crashed the flukiest team on the planet. So we move on to who's this? Ah, Mike Morell and balls out. Let me ask you, how many trades has he offered you this season so far? You know what? He has not, I don't think he's offered me any, which is very strange for him, very strange for him. Yeah, he's been a little quiet, but I mean, let me remind me, didn't this guy have like a million early round picks, like in the first five or six rounds? Didn't he have like a million draft picks to play with? He was and- he was done drafting, I think, in like the the eighth round or the sixth round, something seventh. Like he he had everything moved up. Yeah, he was he was good to go. And he has a nine and record to show for it and a point differential of ooh, like not even in the triple digits. What is that like? I can't do math. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, 418, 460. So what, 42? 42 that's, points? That's I mean, that's in the positive, but if you're if you have like all these early round draft picks, yeah, you better be like 150 plus or something, 200 plus. Like, like, like this team right here at the top. Who is this team? It has 4,600 points for and 4,000. That's a point differential of 300. That should be his team. Oh, it's my team. With the plus 300 differential. Yeah, that's what morale, that's what balls out should look like at the moment, but it doesn't. And I think it has Where a lot to do did it with, go wrong? I think it's the keepers. I think he's put so much stock on those early round draft picks that people kind of forget. That's why I'm I'm like, here, you want my first round pick? Take him, but you're gonna give me the player that I want. That's how I ended up getting Aaron mm-hmm. Judge. That's how I ended up getting Mike Trout. That's how I ended up getting uh Manny Machado and yeah. a lot of, other, of those other guys. It's like, yeah, if I'm gonna give up a first or second round pick, you better give me your best player. Otherwise, it's staying with me. But I am more than happy to hear you out on, on those early round picks. Take them away. I don't care. Because keepers are just as important as those early round picks. What good is it to have a 20 million early round draft picks if you have awful keepers? I think Ali Rushman might have been one of his keepers. I'm pretty sure some someone could tell me who his keepers was. If they could do it off memory, that'd be greatly appreciated. I think uh, Robert and Harper were. Maybe Franco. Yeah, maybe. Franco was. Yeah. Uh, maybe Byron man, he, Buxton. I know, I know, I know. Buxton was not a keeper. I don't. I'm pretty sure he wasn't. But man, he he will not give up on that dude. <laughs> like, okay, well, Primo saying he turns his championship week one teams into mush so often it's almost expected. <laughs> uh, the commissioner. Uh, I noticed that Mike has dialed it back a little bit too on the trades. So balls out. Uh, maybe learning his lesson. I don't know, but he's. This is not the first time he's done that. He's done that before, and it drives everybody crazy. I mean, it's interesting strategy. But I mean, and he does have some decent players. I mean, maybe he kept Jose Altuve. Maybe he kept Austin Riley. Maybe he kept Byron Buxton. But uh, yeah, a lot of those guys are not living up to their potential, uh, to their uh, namesake. They, these are some bigger names who are not playing like big names. So tell me it, what happened to Chris Bryant, man. Can't stay healthy. Yeah. Can't stay healthy. Now he has a finger injury. He just came back from a back injury, I thought it was. Doesn't matter. He's hurt. He plays it's in Colorado. Doesn't take yeah, advantage. I'm sorry, what was that? It's always his back. Yeah. And and, and I see I dropped Eloy because I got tired of him getting injured and he scooped him up right away. Damn it. I missed out on that. Yeah, you can you can you can play the the Russian roulette with him too and his his hamstrings and his groins and all that <laughs> stuff that goes on with that. How has he done? So I'm waiting yeah, on I mean, Melvin. Uh, Melvin has him in the podcast. I'm just waiting for him to drop him again so I can scoop him up again. Yeah, 31 yeah. points. So this, I mean, he, he's he been known to big give you some big boom weeks. 17 points, that's pretty steady. Yeah, but I can see your frustration. 16, 14, yeah. what, 12. Yeah, that's not why you drafted or kept Eloy Jimenez. So, he was uh, my second 
pick, I think, at the time. He was my second. Yeah, I think he was my second pick. Was trying All to right. solidify that left field spot, thinking, oh, he's going to be a DH. He won't get hurt as much. And then the dude got hurt like the first week DHing. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. It's a lawyer menace. <laughs> Uh, on the pitching side, so this is a trend I noticed. He so he, balls out has big names. They're not playing with the big name no. uh, yeah. reputations. And he also play uh, for some reason. He played it very safe with the veterans here too. There's not a guy with upside here. Just steadiness is the name of the game. But sometimes you can be a little bit too steady. Although Class A has been, uh, he, there was a point, a stretch of a, a month where he was just crapping the toilet for lack of a better idiom where he was just not very trustworthy where and got losses from <laughs> yeah exactly seven blown saves uh you darvish uh he's uh showing his age a little bit joe musgrove for a while looked like he was he just uh, picked up darvish though i'm sorry what was that he just picked up darvish somebody dropped darvish and he picked him up that's right uh, i melvin it was melvin no yeah. was it no i think it, i think it was melvin <laughs> Of course it was. I'm not, well, maybe this one's warranted. I'm, I don't want to bash him too much because you know, he's a good guy, good friend of mine. But it's just too easy. But maybe with Darvish, it's justified. So I'll leave him alone there. But yeah, Carlos Rodon, these are guys uh, that are usually dependable. And for whatever reason, they're Lance. there's your guy, Lance Lynn, Alec Manoa, Jeez. and Shohei Otani. Maybe he can't figure out if he should be a pitcher. I feel like Lance Lynn and hitter. Manoa are the same people, just two really big dudes that <laughs> – <laughs> Major League Baseball and, and have the, damn near identical, right? Six ERAs for sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Nestor Cortez is hurt. Jack Leiter again, another big name, but he's hurt and he's inconsistent. Jack Leiter, where did I have him on my prospect list coming into the season? Because you know, he's coming off Tommy John. No, I thought he was healthy. I think maybe he just had Tommy John. Let me see here. Uh, Jack Leiter turns to the list. The organization says Leiter is fine physically, but it wants the right-hander to work on his mechanics. Okay, uh, this is a guy who was supposed to be ready to go the day he was yep. drafted. Yep. And and I remember that people were complaining, like, this is why Major League Baseball has a crappy draft system, because we got to wait two or three years for him to develop and, and, and be brought up to the big league team. <laughs> Keep waiting. Keep waiting. Nothing's riskier than drafting a pitcher out of, uh, in the Major League Baseball draft. But I had... On my on my prospect sheet here, if I could find oh number uh, twenty number seventeen number seventeen overall, despite the fact that he has pedigree, he his dad was a famous pitcher, uh, he has really high tools. Um, number seventeen because I just I don't know what the Rangers are gonna do. I don't I just didn't see the Rangers calling him up to help him out in the stretch run. So I mean, and now the talk, I mean, when they drafted him, the talk about him was he was, you know, almost major league ready straight out. the. Uh, but yeah, it just never happened. But I don't remember what I could. I don't know. I, I just could have swore it was a Tommy John thing. You might be Tommy confusing him with sure. you might be confusing him with Kumar of Rocker, also of the Rangers. I Maybe. believe he just had Tommy John surgery. Maybe. And that's a shame because uh, that's another high upside guy that the Rangers were counting on. And I, he's, I believe he's the guy that you're thinking of that you're confusing him with, uh, Jack Leiter. Let's take a look. Yep. Out for the season, elbow injury. It was yep, yeah, Tommy John surgery, it. May 24th, Kumar Rocker. What a shame. Yeah. Damn shame. But it's the risk you take when you draft a pitcher in the Major League Baseball draft. Let's go back to Shane. Shane, Sugar Shane, as I like to call him, or right now he is, uh, last I checked, he's whooping cancer's ass. Last I checked, I hope. He continues his long road to recovery there. Our thoughts yes, are sir. with you, my friend. 10 and 7. And this is a guy who missed a draft because uh family emergency, I believe, is what the excuse was. Yeah. Uh sorry, I don't mean to short, you know, but that's that's what he told us. So and the auto draft drafted all these closers. Yes, they did. <laughs> and somehow he's 10 and 7. He's winning. He's the best team in that division. So let's find out. Yeah, when you have Freddie Freeman, that's always good. Ozzy Albies, yep. even though he has a 319 on base percentage, Felipe, shut up. You don't have a second baseman, so don't don't bash him too much. Alex Bregman, also 300-plus points in this league, despite the fact that he only has a 255 batting average with 346 on base, which is pretty solid in today's baseball. From But from a guy with Alex Bregman's talent, you expect a little bit more than that. Same thing with Xander Bogarts. Trash there, cans. Trash cans. <laughs> well, I heard that Bregman wasn't using trash cans, but I don't know what to believe anymore. I'm not letting it go. Not letting it go. The white that was the White Sox uh, the division series win the next year, and they blow mm -hmm. it. 
so they have some good pieces, but they also have uh, uh, some guys that um, they're not playing to their full potential. So maybe they'll turn things around in the second half, but that's a big ask. But it is possible with the names that they have. Let's go on to the pitching side of things. And, yeah, when you have a guy like Devin Williams and David Robertson, who might as well Man, put him in that guy. list with that, Kenley. That. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, he looks – I mean, that dude, I I kind of wrote him off, and he's, he's been solid. I didn't even bother booming him up when Edwin Diaz got hurt. Like, ah, I don't – I don't Exactly, yeah. I, I I'm not targeting David Robertson because – I thought the Mets had enough options where David Robertson's job was not going to be steady. Boy, was I wrong. Ageless wonder, just like Kenley Jansen, David Robertson, it's time to put some respect on his name, damn it. But <laughs> he does have some pitching in, in terms of starters. Shane Bieber, hurt. Um, Jose Requiti, I know that's a guy that I was. Oh, yeah. my boy, Reed. He just, he cannot get it together. Oh. Reed, Reed Detmers? Yeah. Yeah, uh, same. I had a lot of faith, despite the fact that the Angels go with a six-man rotation. I thought it would I, that he would be so good anyway, and uh, he's just been up and down. Every time he, you think he's going to turn the corner, he goes back to his struggles, which really sucks. Um, and then Ryan Helsey's hurt, so that was one of the closers, I believe, that was drafted on auto-draft. Clay Holmes also was drafted on auto-draft, I believe. Pete Fairbanks, I remember him. Uh, but, you know... But for every Pete Fairbanks uh, questionable auto pick draft, there's Zach Elflin, who has been wonderful for the Tampa Bay Rays. So, uh, And then there's Nick Pavetta, who I think he was with the Tampa Bay Rays last year, now with the Red Sox, also doing some wonders over there. We Nick Pavetta has always been a guy that we got to keep our eye on because you never know. 95 strikeouts and 76 innings pitched. I mean, yeah. who's, who's complaining? And, so. and I'm looking, uh, if my math is right, he's got about 81 saves in his starting lineup. <laughs> hey man those are 10 points each that's maybe that's the, maybe that's, that's the secret points. maybe that's the new strategy get as many closes as you can corner that market 10 points a save is as good as 10 points a win well i mean this helps a lot 11 11 yeah. times 10 that's 110 points if my math is correct i haven't done multiplication tables in a long time but zach elfin getting 11 wins also helps a lot so yeah uh, you and can see the points on his closers yeah <laughs> But yeah, uh, while while he waits for this hitting to get his act together, get their act together, the pitching has been carrying him. So I can see how he's ten and seven and the number four best team according to the power rankings. Ah, here we go, Primo, who's been with us. He's been waiting very patiently. I believe he's the division leader. No, he's three games behind at ten and seven behind the Evil Empire, the Yankee fan from uh, the Chicagoland area. Primo, he's from South Jersey, big Phillies fan. Like you said, day one guy in this league. Uh, also won a few championships under his belt. And there's a the guy who picked up Francisco Alvarez off of me. Yeah, the one time I should have been um, patient, I figured I could I could play the hot hand and get back to Alvarez later, right? And I waited too long. And he got him. And he also has Pete Alonso. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, yeah. Um, oh, I thought you were saying something else. But yeah, Pete Alonso you- with his 310 on base percentage. Um, it's the home runs that's, uh, that's been making him valuable on this team. But yeah, the 310 on base percentages, it would be unacceptable for me at this point. Go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at this lineup. I mean, this is pretty solid. I mean, you're, you know, I mean, okay, third base, eh, but I mean, Alonzo, Turner, Garcia, although Garcia, I feel like it slowed down a little bit. Um, and then Acuna, um, not, not a bad lineup at all. Yeah. Uh, Primo always uh, brings in a solid lineup. Sometimes, uh, it could be a little too crazy, but he, his lineups are always fantastic. And that's why that's how he's able to win multiple championships, right? Uh, he's letting me know that uh, Alec Baum just got a walk-off hit. And Alec Baum, big Phillies fan, that's a homer pick, is on this team. Mm. Just planting those seeds. He's been waiting for something <laughs> to happen. But unfortunately, he also got Trey Turner, who has been, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe it, it works better in a points league. But if I'm in a categories league and I got Trey Turner on my team, I would be super disappointed right now. Oh, well, especially with where he was going. I, I, he had to be the number one overall pick in this league. I mean, well, or out of the keeper. round. Because I don't know if he was a keeper. Or no, he, he had was. to. Yeah. And uh, there's Adolis Garcia, which I, I, I've i been pretty clear about my, dis, not disdain, but just my, I don't trust the guy. But every year he proves me wrong, so. I had him last year. He was pretty solid for me. I picked him for the home run derby and he let me down. So, yeah, Adolis Garcia sucks. Can't be dependent. Can't trust him. <laughs> uh 
how happy would you be with Kyle Schroeder and his 185 batting average? I know batting average doesn't mean anything, but to be this low, but again, it's a points league, so power is is king, is king. 26 home runs is will always. He's also play. getting negative points every time he strikes out. You know what <laughs> I mean? So. <laughs> but he also walked 66 times, so it, yeah. Well, let's find out. I'm kind of curious. In a categories league, I would just say, screw this guy. I don't want him anywhere near me. But maybe in a points league is different. Primo is kind of wacky like that. Uh, right off the bat, week three, 35 big points, 24 and a half in week eight, 20 in week nine. So, yeah, he's getting 20 points. He's doing better than Loy Jimenez. I can tell you that much. Remember that discussion between White Sox <laughs> fans and Cub fans as to who was better, Loy Jimenez or Kyle Schwarber. And and the prognosis was that they're both awful outfielders. But I would take Kyle Schwarber's arm over Eloy Jimenez any day. And the best part about Kyle Schwarber is he doesn't get us hurt as easy. True. Yeah. 100% accurate on that statement. Good Lord. Like, quick quick look at the, uh, at the uh, pitching side of things. Corbin Burns, I don't know, for some reason, people every time people talk about Corbin Burns, they talk about him as being a disappointment. But. That's pretty solid, you know, 125 strikeouts and 121 innings pitch, 1.06 whip. I think a lot of people would take that. Um, the rest of this staff, I'm kind of wary about. It's like Corbin Burns is the uh, the Mike Trout equivalent of the pitching star, uh, s- stars and scrubs aspect of things. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, <clears throat> he picked up Pablo Lopez for me when I gave up on him a while back ago. So my impatience is Primo's gain. And Freddie Feralta, just when we think we should give up on him, he does enough to be relevant, I guess. I don't know. Uh, anything else stick out for you on this team in terms of pitching? No, I know. I know I was I was chasing Corbin Burns from him. We couldn't get it done. But I look at, I mean, yeah, the and Paul, Pablo Lopez is a guy that I've had a love-hate relationship for years. But, yeah, oh. we, we're always looking in the, in the mid-four ERA by the end of the season. <laughs> well, Primo's letting me know that he just traded two weeks ago. He traded uh, Masakara Yoshida for Kyle Schwarber, and I don't know why. I'm assuming that's who he's talking. Yoshida. I'm, I'm assuming it's the guy, who, the rookie from Japan for yeah. Kyle Schwarber. Maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but in my book, I think I think Yoshida is better, way better than Kyle Schwarber at this stage of the career, uh, at this stage of the game. But you yeah, know, I Phillies would. fan knows something that we don't know. Maybe I don't know. I'm not gonna question Primo. He's usually pretty solid with the trades. But you know, he needed to get his Philly guy. So he has already he has like 20 Phillies guy in this team. You got Aaron Nola, Craig Kimbrell. <laughs> How many more Phillies do you need? Anyway, ten and seven, Primo. He needs as many Phillies as you need Reds. Yeah, give me all the Reds. Give me all the <laughs> Reds. I want so many Reds that people are gonna wonder if I'm communist or not. Which people already, do. <laughs> which I'm not. I'm no. I don't. I don't. Um, well, I don't want to talk about political philosophies here. But uh, no, let's move on here. So this is the last one. team. We made it, Carrie. We made it. And that's, the evil that, empire. That's who I'm playing this week, and uh, I jumped out to a pretty nice lead. But I don't trust that nice lead because this guy has been. Like I think he's twelve and three. He's thirteen been... three and one on a current yeah. seven game winning streak. So you... hey, I got a six game winning streak. He's got a seven game winning streak. We're going head to head. Something only, has to give. Only one can continue here. And he's been a pretty since he joined this league. I know he's only made the playoffs a handful of times. I feel like, but he always has really really good teams. But he's always the victim of bad luck. I know this because he he puts up a lot of points. Yes, I but feel he, like he gives yes. up a lot of points. You are right. I think, um, yeah, every year. And I feel like he's always got really good hitting. And always got really good points. But this is the first year that he's really, like, kind of running away. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. massacring it. I mean, there's a, it's massacre when you have to face him. He has 4,900 points so far. And the next cl- closest guy, who would that be? That closest you. guy in terms of points. No, it's Primo. Primo is uh, second in points, according to the power rankings. Uh, are those updated lives? Yeah, 4,700 points. So, yeah, now Primo is the, 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 the product of bad luck, having to be in the same division as the as Soto's team. By the way, yes, mm-hmm. we do have a Juan Soto in this league. Not that Juan Soto, though. But, yeah, 4,700 points. And then me, I'm in third place with 4,600 points. So, the great way to combat bad luck, right? Just score more points than everybody else. But we mentioned that his hitting is always good. Mm, uh, yeah. Okay, Primo. 
Schwarber gets hot from July moving forward, and I want him for that final push. Yeah, if you're gonna go with that theory about you know, I know what I'm getting with Kyle Schwarber, and I want that uh, predictability. That's a good reason enough as it is, I guess. Right? What do you think? Have you ever thought about the game in that way? That I know that this guy will tear things apart in the second half after the All Star oh, game. No. Well, there are there are times where I've I've tr- I mean I've tried to play that, but um, it it usually does not work for me. <laughs> I'm trying to give an example, but I know that I've had players where I'm like, all right, well he'll get hot. Um, oh, Solaire, Solaire <laughs> for a while he would only play good when it was hot out. And then I had him for a few years, and then he just absolutely did terrible. Now I got him this year. He's actually been pretty steady, so I can't complain. But that dude's usually all over the place. Well, here's Soto's team. Uh, it's as solid as always. I mean, Mookie Betts at second base is a crime against humanity. Yes. Uh, and, 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 the, and shortstop eligibility. Well, this is interesting. Oh, I did not know that about Mookie Betts. Holy crap. That yeah. is a danger. He is a danger. Uh, Henry Davis is his right fielder. The the rookie prospect from the Pittsburgh Pirates. I thought he was an afterthought, but uh, Soto's like, nope, I want him in my starting lineup. I want him bad. He's my catcher and my right fielder. And since he's been called up, he has a 366 on base percentage and a 430 slugging percentage. That's that's a shocker. I wasn't expecting much, especially I playing him. for the Pirates. I grabbed him when he first came up because I needed a spot start a catcher for, for um, I can't even, uh, Sean Murphy. And, uh, I used him for a week, then I dropped him. Henry Davis yeah. was such an afterthought for me that I don't even have him ranked in my uh, in, in my prospect list because I have Andy Rodriguez as the guy to the catcher to get for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and I figure Henry the, Davis because the Pirates are the Pirates was never going to get called up. Sure enough, he gets called up, and it's paying off dividends for uh, yeah. for Juan here. Go ahead. Solid. No, I mean he's he's been solid. I mean nothing like you know insanely crazy, but definitely solid. It's a really good lineup, man. Jose Ramirez, Dansby Swanson. Uh, Corbin Carroll, Cody Bellinger. Uh, well, the, Corbin Carroll has been huge. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you put him with Mookie Betts and Jose. I mean, yeah, this, yeah, he, yeah. As always, the offense is there for him. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of scary. And he still has punch and Judy hitters like <laughs> Tyro Estrada, Nico Horner, Alex Verdugo. Literally, he has every punch and Judy hitter known to man. And then to make things yeah. even worse, Cedric, Mullins, he's just waiting on Cedric Mullins to come back. You thought my injured list team was good. This team is. Pretty damn stack in that regard as well. <laughs> but here's his Waterloo right here. Uh, and I think you've noticed this. This is pitching. His pitching is unpredictable. But this might just be the best pitching staff I've ever seen out of this guy. I mean, Spencer Strider, to go along with Kevin Gossman and Shane McClanahan, that, that's, he's, he's on cheat code status right now. I, we're in trouble here, Kerry. Yes, yeah. I Well, I'm, a, I'm, you know what? I'm planning on beating him. I got a pretty large lead right now. So uh, gonna hold the line, hold the line. But uh, Jose Barrios, oh, my Lord, that man drives me insane. And I, I can't stay away from him. I, get, I drafted him this year, and then I had to drop him. And now he's got him. And I got to say, I mean, he's not – I wouldn't say he's doing terrible, but mm. – It's it's like – it's it's shaky, right? It's like yeah. – I know he's doing well, but it's Jose Barrios. Mm-hmm. But if you play your cards right, it sh- he shouldn't have cost you too much in terms of draft capital because I had no, Alec – what, sorry, what was that? No, I dra- when I drafted him, it was late. Yeah, I was able to pick him up late. Yeah, so, I mean, take a flyer on him. I mean, looking back, I had him at number 73 behind guys like Lance McCullers and Carlos Carrasco. Uh, Jose Barrios was number 73, 73 overall and my starting pitching list in front of guys like Jamison Tyone, Jose Urquidy, Justin Steele, Edward Cabrera, Jose Quintana. I mean... To take get your lottery tickets, man. Take a Jose Barrios lottery tickets, get all the berries scratch off. You know, the scratch offs, you get three berries in a row, you get three hundred dollars, right? That's what you got in Jose Barrios this year. And did you 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 couldn't you didn't you had McClanahan last year, but you couldn't hold on to him because you had the hitters. So and I, I didn't trust him. I didn't trust him. I didn't trust yeah, him. He drafted him and look I'm sitting here eleven and one. Wow. The last thing I told, and I've been very consistent with my story here. The last image I had of Shane McClanahan last year was him throwing warm up pitches for the Tampa Bay Rays on, uh, for, for a game he was supposed to start. And next thing you know, he's grabbing onto his arm and, and like just kind of massaging it and in severe pain. And like, uh uh-uh, uh, forget this. I don't need this in my life. I'm done. I don't, I ran for the hills. And, but then, you know, I thought he was too much of a risk, but I thought Tyler Glass now was the perfect 
pitcher to draft. And now he's paying off dividends. But you can imagine that living in a world where Shane McClanahan is too risky. But Tyler Glass now is just right. You were trying to use the uh, the eye test for some reason there. Yeah, this is why I I don't trust my own eyes. Like I should if I would have just gone with the numbers, ah, but he'll be fine. But no, that, that was the last image I saw of him. Like, I don't want to be, I don't know what's going to happen next. That's usually not good. That's not a good sign. I am running for the hells. And not just those veterans that Soto gets, but he also has Bryce Miller. Like, guys, what are you all doing letting him get all the prospects too? It's one thing that he has all the veterans, but he, now he has a prospect like Bryce Miller. Yeah. What are you all doing? And then people are going, well, Felipe, what are you doing? Like, it's not about me. It's about you guys. I'm doing fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's how I, I view it. I'm I'm you know i got my own prospects but yeah he man he's pretty well rounded here bryce miller 26 overall my prospect list again if it was a list of uh not just on ability and pedigree and potential but will he be called up and i thought the mariners had a really good pitching staff uh solid pitching staff they were competing for the right now if anything bryce miller might get traded later boy was i wrong and i also had a guy like uh, his teammate taylor dollard ahead of him mm. i have not heard a single thing about him all oh. this year no, I, I don't mean either. I was going to say, I, so man, I can't even tell you the last time I got, I even heard an update on him. So Felipe messed up there. Bryce Miller was the Mariners pitcher to get, and I should have shot him up way up to the top. And I didn't because I didn't, I didn't foresee the Mariners having it in it to pick up, pick him up off of triple A or double A or the minors. I should say, I forgot where he started from. I don't feel like anyway, I'm not going to, I'm done. I don't want to be making any more assumptions. That's a scary team though. So I ask you, yeah. our, my fellow league mates, put it in the comment section. Do you believe not only is uh, the evil empire the front runner, but do you believe that he will be the champion when it's all said and done for this league? No. Because it, it looks, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat him this week and then things will go downhill for him and <laughs> I'll rise to where I need to be. It's a, it's a hell of a team, man. It is a hell of a team. I'm scared. I hope I don't face them. I think I faced them once already. I might have. I may have won that league, that that game. But I, I, it might be one of those things where I wasn't too proud of myself, my, my performance. So it might have been an off week for him and a really good week for me. Let's take a look at the schedule, see what it, uh, let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's the full. No, I don't want the full schedule. I want the team schedule, my team. I just want to make sure. Did I beat them? At, at least I have that going. Yeah. Oh, look at that. This is my team, right? Am I dreaming? Yeah, Black Hole Army. I beat them back in week 10, 325 to 283. So, yeah. Check out week yeah. four. Week four was a good week. No, I wasn't. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> you, you always got to be this way, man. Here I am, you know, I'm putting you on my on my platform. And, and Damn, and, and look at week 15. No, look we don't look 15. at that. We don't talk about those weeks, man. Man. No, we don't talk about those. No, I, I took care of the teams I had to take care of. You're just a thorn on my side, an inconvenient truth, an inconvenience in, in my life. <laughs> I don't even know why I invited you here. You're just such a I hate I just I hate seeing you in this league. So I I lost one and one one against him this year so far. I believe. Good. All right. Well, I actually want him to beat you this week. No, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, I, yeah. I would nothing would make me happy right now than to see him beat you. This week, I stand corrected. I, I, you don't have the wrong team. I lost to him this year. Now this is our second matchup. So got a nice, n- nice lead, but we're still early. So we'll see how this plays out. And assuming that the schedule is correct, I get to face him week 21. So four weeks from now, a month from now, As, again, I'm assuming that this schedule is correct. Robert, let us know. I, 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 last year was such a big fiasco when missed by me i miscounted the weeks i forgot that the that the schedule at the end of the season isn't the real schedule robert i need a, i need i need a commissioner or somebody should know i don't know anymore i don't know what the rules are i know that we play every like single it week changes up the schedule yeah. changes up from time to time i don't question it i just know you put him in front of me i'm gonna knock him down <laughs> yeah yeah uh, play me a third time and see what happens you're not gonna beat me a third time i could tell you that it's much. very hard to beat a team uh, three times in fantasy you're so damn you know, right especially my team i'm firing all cylinders man i'm gonna get aaron judge back i'm gonna get uh jordan back i'm gonna get mike chop back and you're in real trouble and my yeah. second baseman situation will be uh situated by then you it's know all the toes and, and obliques are uh, hold up you'll be all right yeah man they just gotta stop using them weights right <laughs> okay dave dave's saying that the last three weeks are the division game thank you for reminding me um Ah, well, here it is. Primo is like an encyclopedia. and He's an encyclopedia of knowledge here. He's saying that Shane McClanahan and Corbin Carroll were traded to Juan from balls out. 
I wonder what ball, what Mike Morrell was trying to get on those deals. Wow. Just, tra- just trading away big name players, really good players. Just to say, I got 2700 first round draft picks next year. What do you have? Like I had, I, I, I make traded, good... him, He traded both of them for draft picks. It has to be. Yeah. Has to be. I mean, Corbin Carroll and Shane McClanahan, are there? <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I? The, that means that I. What? When did that happen? You had to have traded for McCallahan then because you had him. I did. I did. But what? Maybe I didn't keep him. He drafts him and then he turns around and trades both Corbin Carroll and Shane McClanahan for draft picks. What the hell are you doing? That doesn't make any sense. I got to look into this more. Primo, if you're looking into it, look into it more some more. Can I filter? Oh, okay. So I can filter this, right? This will be the last thing we do because this is driving me crazy. Oh, wait. No, uh, Primo says he got Otani and an injured Bryce Harper and Roberts. Luis Roberts? Oh. Hmm. Why do I kind of remember that? I don't remember anything at this point. I kind of vaguely remember that. All right, let's... uh, how does Primo remember this? Well, well, Primo's always looking to trade to make trades too, but he's not. He's not being. He's not being irresponsible about it either. I can tell you that much. I like. I like trading with Primo. I have nothing but good, happy thoughts about trading with Primo. I guess we we just make it work. Ah, June four. This is a recent trade, Carrie. Where the hell have you been, man? This is a recent trade right here. Look at this. Okay, so draft picks were swapped, right? Yeah. Balls out, trades a fourth round pick. Is that what it is? That doesn't make any sense. I hate this. I can't figure this out. But yeah, there it is. Carlos Rodon, Shoyo Tani for Corbin Carroll and Shane McClanahan. That's what it looks like here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Carlos Rodon, huh? Jeez. You know Man. what? What was he? I don't know. Was he expecting Rodon to come back and, you know, do I think I, I think he I saw. Know. Shohei Otani. I mean, ball, uh, Mike is a big Angels fan, but he's had yes. Otani and traded Otani away and gotten him back and traded him out. It's like it's like a revolving door. He just keeps getting him back, or at least he he puts him out there to see if he can get like twenty million draft picks. So he got him back again this year. It seems like so that well, was nothing, a big prize. Nothing but, like making the first place team even stronger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, wow. and we, and you know, our shame on us. We let it, we let it happen. We let it happen. It's, it's our fault. So anyway, that's a good place to stop. Carrie, overall thoughts, final words from you. Thank you for coming up, but uh, let's give you the final word here. Um. Well, I mean, listen, we, the thing that I noticed, at least I, I, I as much as we went through these teams and we looked, it, the interesting thing is I don't feel like there's too many teams that are just that much in shambles or that we could really destroy that much. Um, well, this then, what are you talking about and, i mean th- there's but but even i mean <laughs> nobody's that far it's kind of I, I guess what i'm getting at it's it's nice because like in a way like there's just it's competitive all around like yeah. everybody stays small it's competitive um like even and, and even like something like what is it texas sooners team who were questioning why he's holding those guys but there's a guy that is proven to win so it's like hey you do your thing buddy because we you obviously know something we don't because you you've won before so yeah i mean it, and it's, it's just interesting. It just stood out to me that there was no team that we just completely destroyed. And, I would and, and he's beating me this week. I was gonna say he's beating me this week, and it's he's not he's it's not like he's not trying. I think no, he has he was beating me until until Sunday last week. He was beating me until Sunday, and I just was able to squeak it out. And, and he's constantly fixing his lineup, unlike what we found out in the in our podcast, because that people have already banked it in, and that's a pay league. Not that this one isn't, but both of these are pay leagues. All, all of my leagues are pay leagues. But that was a big complaint. Well, if this was a pay league, we would take it more seriously. It's a free league. Last year, it was a free league, so we weren't taking that seriously. But now it's a pay league, so, Felipe, you're in trouble. It's the same results. Everybody does the I same thing that, that they would if they, if it was a free league. So what difference does it make? But sooner here, I mean, he's he's stacking that lineup against me, man. He has, I think he has, like, nine pitching starts this week versus my six. Well, I'm rooting for him. No, I'm no no, wrong answer. Wrong answer, Carrie. Why did I invite you here? You piss me off. We're arch nemesis going back to our fantasy football days, sir. 
<laughs> we'll always be the thorn in your side. All yeah, the way whatever. Through. Yeah, well, one day we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll cross paths and because uh, I think I had one, you had one. Mm-hmm. We'll cross paths and then uh, we'll 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 uh, we'll play for fantasy football supremacy one more time. I have a feeling, but I'm actually retiring from fantasy football this year. For the time being, I just I can't do it. I, I just I'm tired of it. And uh, but anyway, that's a different subject for another day. Uh, thank you so much for showing up. I know that it was a last minute thing, but I do appreciate you showing up. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I know yeah. that we had a couple of guys in the uh, in the league asking to put our thoughts. Uh, now that we're at the midway point, so I thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it is a competitive league, even though the records might say otherwise, the points might say otherwise, and some of the boneheaded moves that we we spotlighted might say otherwise. But people are trying, and trying is at the battle. But and. and yeah, I, I, this is why I don't leave. As much as this league frustrates me, as much as the luck factor pisses me off about it, as much as the volume aspect of it, like, oh, I'm going to get like 22 start pitchers this week and I'm going to win like 600 points to like 100 because you're an idiot. You don't want to go and chase those pitches off waiver wire. It is a very hyper competitive league. And, and, and it's a it's a close, as you've seen in the six seasons, Kerry, it's a very close knit group, right? So. Oh, yeah. And you know what? One day, one day you will get that elusive championship, sir. One day. One day, I'm fucking mad. I'm banking out of this year. What are you talking? One day, it better happen this year. If it, it, if it doesn't happen this year, I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. And, and you know what, Kerry? I've had you. You've only been a part of this for six years. I've actually had really good teams who have underachieved, and but they were better than the team I have now, not including the guys who are injured. Those I've had better, much better teams who have underachieved, never done anything. This ragtag team hurt and it's waiver wire fodder and I'm surviving and I'm not just surviving. I have the third most points in the league. So this is special and seeing Soto's team kind of scares me, but I know that I have the horses to put up a fight with them. You know, that's all I have to ask is put up a freaking fight. Listen, that's I, all you can ask for because eventually you run into you run into you know maybe my team and and you know your horses your horses start trotting. Screw your team. Screw your team. <laughs> I'll be ready for your team next time. I, I think I have it down to a science. Your team don't scare me. Anyway, we could talk about this all day. But Steve, thank you so much for showing up. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. We will see you all in two weeks. And then hopefully, I'll get Sean back on a Sunday. Until then, this is the Total Basis Podcast. We'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.